one of the first few things you're taught when learning to play Magic the Gathering is when you can cast spells. Instance and permanence with flash can be cast at any time you have priority, whereas sorceries and all other non-flash spells can be cast during your main phases and while the stack is clear. However, there are some cards that let you break these rules, but it can be a little confusing as to which can do this. So, in today's video, we're going to cover an easy way to remember this, as well as some other key things you need to know when cheating spells into play. First up, let's talk about a common misconception. The MTG rules for casting spells tell you what you can't do. Well, actually, the opposite is true. Magic the Gathering rules for casting spells isn't restrictive, it's permissive. The rules tell you what you can do, not what you can't. Rule 601.3 says, A player can begin to cast a spell only if a rule or an effect allows that player to cast it, and no rule or effect prohibits that player from casting it. Effectively, all this means is, is that when a card tells you you can do something, you now have the permission to do it. Let's look at this example here. Omni Spell Adept. A 5 mana 3 4 that says, pay 2 and a blue, tap, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. So we can simply pay 3 mana and we get to cast an instant or sorcery from our hand for free. Simple. But one question that comes up most often with these sorts of cards is, can I activate this ability during my opponent's turn and cast a sorcery? Well, in short, yes you can. And this is where we need to learn the difference between one-shot effects and continuous effects. Simply put, a one-shot effect is something that happens in one shot. Rule 610.1 says, a one-shot effect does something just once and doesn't have a duration. Examples of this include the aforementioned Omni Spells Adept's activated ability, Atali Primal Storm's attacked trigger ability, the sorcery Epic Experiment, or my favorite keyword ability, Cascade. All of these effects grant you permission to cast a spell right then and there. These one-shot effects effectively allow you to break traditional timing restriction rules and allow you to cast sorcery speed spells at any time. On the flip side, let's take a look at this card here. Mission Briefing. A 2 mana instant that says, Surveil 2, then choose an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard, you may cast it this turn. If that spell would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. On the surface, this looks extremely similar to Omni Spell Adept's ability, but there is one small difference between them that greatly changes how these cards operate. The key phrase we're looking for is this turn, and that's where we learn about continuous effects. As per the rules, a continuous effect is an effect that modifies characteristics of objects, modifies control of objects, or affects the players or the rules of the game for a fixed or indefinite period. In this case, all Mission Briefing is doing is simply giving us the opportunity and permission to cast a spell this turn from the graveyard at some point if you're able to. It's not giving you permission to cast a spell right then and there. So would we be able to cast a sorcery during our opponent's turn with Mission Briefing? No, we don't have permission. The only permission we have is Rule 307.1. A player who has priority may cast a sorcery card from their hand during the main phase of their turn when the stack is empty. Okay, now we know what to look for when we want to cheat spells into play. But you need to remember these important things too. When a spell or an ability allows you to cast a spell without paying its mana cost, it will only pay for the cost in the top right corner. Anything else, you've got to pay for it. That includes additional costs like the one on Village Rights, Calamity of the Titans, or Collective Brutality. You'll also have to pay any mana taxes that may incur from cards like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, Elspeth Conquers Death, or Squeeze. Some other important things to note when casting spells for free is alternative costs like Overload or Mutate cannot be paid, X spells that get cast for free will always have an X value of zero, 
and you can cast spells with no mana value like Ancestral Visions, Living End, or Asmo Ando, Madoka de Sintikudaka. And finally, optional additional costs like Kicker, Bargain, or Buyback may be paid as you're casting the free spell. Now, if you've learned something this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you've got any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you want to learn about more interesting interactions you should know, check out this video here. I hope you have a good night, and I'll see you in the next one.